The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. Let me just show you this uh, one minute and 10 minute chart series right here. There was a sudden move to the upside, kind of a news related pop. I think it's going to be a pop and a drop because normally under every single circumstance that we've seen for years and years and years, when it's Fed speak day, if the market is sharply low, by the time it gets to uh, within 45 minutes to an hour of Fed speak, the market seems to come back to wait for the Fed or if it's much higher, the Fed will come down a little bit waiting that the market will come down waiting for fed speak so i suspect that the 39 72.25 high that was made just a couple of minutes ago is in the category of some kind of toppyish action doesn't say i'm not saying major, major crash i'm saying the one minute chart suggests that it could pull back 39.60 it's at 39.67 right now 39.60 to 39.55 39.55 will be the containment area that's really important and I suspect that has popped your leg E in the 10-minute uh, chart and will become a peak E, and then it will start a digestive phase. All right, let's get that out of the way. Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technicians. Oh, this is, in fact, the uh, Wednesday edition. Let me just get this dollar, I-N-D-U. The Wednesday edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. And what we're looking at is the 120-minute chart in the Dow made a peak D a couple of days ago. It was at 32,219. We've had three days of consolidation. You know my rule of 136. One, we have one bar of consolidation, and then it moves to a higher high like it did back in uh, around about the 22nd or so of June, and then went immediately to a sharply higher next day high. Um, that's great. Three bars says, yeah, that's that's also very good. When it gets to six bars or more, you really have to restart the whole buy signal or in this in the downside, it's a sell signal. And in this particular, um, the way, way it's looking right now, I suspect that we've got three days. By the end of the day, we should see, here's something. What is Powell going to do? We know that Powell is very constructive in his own way of thinking. You might disagree, but I see it as being very... He's different to many of the other. I mean, I've been listening to the Fed for, for I mean, Volk, since before the Volcker days, um, and you don't always know what's going on. You just, in fact, with Greenspan, it was like you had to have uh, some kind of a, a interpreter to just understand the points that he was trying to make, let alone understand what he was going to do. So, uh, and all, all that he did is kept throwing money out the window um, as Bernanke, they were all done that, yelling. But now what we're looking at is within the context of markets, we've had seven months of, of, of a sell, lower highs and lower lows mostly, certainly in the key indices. I spoke about that as being, if you had to put it into the category of recession, so many sectors, virtually all the sectors, even the financials, have been in recessions. They've had more than two quarters of, uh, of poor earnings. So we're just waiting for the conglomerate to announce that, um, that a recession is, is underway. We know that in many regards, but what really is the, you know, people always say, uh, when you, whenever you express the opinion, things are different this time people roll their eyes and say yeah 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 it's always different yes it is different we haven't had 40 years of the inflation that we've had we haven't had the fed stop their uh, pushing money f out the window um for for this amount of time and this is the first year or almost a year that the fed has actually said that they're going to stop um uh, just printing money as they had of course, they're still printing money. But things are different. This is the first time we've had uh, jobs at the lowest level in 50, 60 years, at the same time as the, the market is very, very poor. And within that context, when you look at it, look at the Dow. There's a month we've got a couple of days to go. Then we wrap up the month. When you go from 36,952 to 29,653, so that's 7,000 7, points 
That's nothing to sneeze at. 7,000 points, a 20% correction. Yet, under all the news that's been floated for months, not just weeks, but months, you wouldn't expect from the news, I'm just talking about the news, we would be down at the 27,000 level. We could still get there. I'm not saying, I'm just saying up until this moment, don't you think that this is actually pretty good action when the negativity has been the most intense since back in the uh, financial crisis days? Of course, this is nothing like the financial crisis in many ways. It's very different. The outcome could be the same in the end. I don't think so. I think that we are, uh, we've ameliorated a lot of the negativity. Even now, look, the Dow's given back some of the gains. It went all the way to 31,949. I'd say 31,900 is going to be strong resistance. And until we can get into the 32,100s to try to tackle leg D above 32,219, uh, it, it's going to be uh, a kind of a toss-up. Uh, the bias right now, even though it's, it's not a fantastic picture, this it's bullish in the daily chart. The weekly chart is... Uh, yes, the stochastic is uh, at 32% and improving, but that's low. The MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. It's at minus 2.65. It's improving. The histogram is improving. The 0% line is so close to po turning positive. Maybe by Thursday it will, maybe Friday. We'll see. And we're holding the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. So a lot of these things on a short-term basis are very positive. Looking out, there's so much work to be done. Now, I'm going to run these through because I had so many questions. I need to go go through them very carefully. So let's just say for the Dow up 117 to 31,879, it's the close today that is going to be important. I couldn't care what happens. In, well, I do care. But it's not as important in today as it is at the close. So what are we looking at? We're looking at... Um, if the Dow is holding above a 90, a plus 90 after 230 and then starts to improve, we could have a very nice close. If it starts to pull back and all of a sudden we go negative, we go like a minus 50, oh, that just says you're going to have to struggle for a while before you can get to that leg D. All right, let's just run these quickly and then I'm going to go to all the other stuff that I need to talk about. I, I have set aside the time. Uh, Larry is still uh, not well. Uh, we, uh, just white lightning out to, to Larry. I mean, I'm getting so many emails and, 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 and messages, and even in the Tiger YouTube and the Den, so many people are saying just we, we our best wishes to, to um, Larry for a speedy recovery. Uh, we're all, all wishing that. Okay. Dow's, um, the S&Ps are 44 at 3965. If by Friday the weekly chart manages to get to 3400, I'm asking for a lot. 3,403. That'll be the first time that the 40-period moving average has been closed above since the collapse, the big move up on the 8th of April, week of the April the 8th, where it hit 45.93. It's at 39.65 right now. It's, it's hit it a couple of times. It refuses to close above it. What a beautiful indicator. 40-period average. I would like to see 35 with the text. Why Friday? That's my push. I do not want to see. I think it's a good time. We've got a lot of stuff. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIVC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here, Dow's up 122, s and up 48, and I'm going to just get to the questions as they come, because that's what I wanted to do today. Question came in, uh, STNG, what was the question itself? I'll tell you right now. Uh, the question was, oh, wasn't this, it was a statement? Uh, oh, oh, let me go back to the very beginning here, where the, where the questions start off. Is that where the questions start off? Yeah, uh, Basil, my friend, uh, what are your thoughts on Sting? Produced a product, um, uh, it's a product tanker. If you held, uh, would you take some off? Thank you. Um, so, um, Peaky's asked about this very often. And Peaky, you know, I, I was, uh, we were in New York last week in Manhattan. And what I've normally done over the years is when I actually am in town, uh, and I have free time, and I'm not just with the grandkids, etc. I usually try to make time to meet with people, uh, subscribers or TFNN listeners who uh, live in New York. This time I said to my wife, I, we've promised ourselves we're just going to take a break for ourselves. We don't really want to uh, do anything to mess up the whole uh, COVID issue. Uh, let's just do that some other time when we're coming to New York and we will all get together uh, have a have a little meeting of Tigers in either Manhattan or Brooklyn. So the question is STNG, it is really strong it's in legs, see in the daily chart uh, Scorpio tankers I think this is oil um, it's got a beautiful U-shaped pattern I, I had to redo this but I remember this was, you had asked about it some time ago, I said I like it and then it pulled back sharply, and then it went right back up again. It's got a beautiful left side, right side price time match. How do I do that? I go like this. I try to find the, what I think would be the fulcrum at the bottom for the left side, which you call the quarrel, the half of a semicircle. And then we want to draw the right side of the semicircle. But if it looks to me like it's just too difficult, then I tend to just grab um, either a peak or a particular candle and uh, from that level, I go left side, right side, price, time match. In this particular case, I'm going to that high of the peak in the monthly chart. I'm making that green. And what I do is I draw it. I, I had this all done a long time ago. I guess I, I lost it because I had to shut down without saving at some point. And then it goes back to a different thing. So it's one bar early and it's gone above the left side high of 
the January of 2020 at 40.45. It slumped down to the sevens, I think it was. Was it uh, 8.28 in October of 2020? Ran up uh, to a beautiful rally. I mean, 24.67. What a nice percentage gain. Then it comes back in the arch formation, holds the left side high. Left side low with a higher high. And then from 11.02, it screams in one move in leg C to a higher high. And today it's at 40.85. It's above that left side high of January 2020. Into leg C in the day, I love in the monthly chart. Leg, I'm calling this a leg E in the monthly just to continue the notation because the MACD is still very strong. But the daily is sort a brand new buy mode, and this is in leg C. So I like it very much. I would not take off anything at this particular point. What I would do, instead of taking it off at 40.25, because I think you can go to for the 41s, and then you've got to be a little careful. My suspicion is the best strategy right now, yes, you could take a little bit off as money management because it's at a fantastic rally. Uh, but at the same time, why not? Um, you know what I'm going to suggest? Take a little bit off at 40.25 right now, just part of money management even though it's leg C um, and then the, the the amount that you would normally take off take off a little bit and then the rest have a stop today's low is 39.77 have a low have 39.25 so you're just giving up a point and have that as a trading stop and the reason is you can get a little bit more um, and and this way you've done money management and you've done preparation for a potential leg D because in the trap wave methodology, once you get from a buy signal to a buy mode with the MACD strong, the nine period way over the 14, the stochastic flat at 94%. Tell you the truth, I don't know if I'd even want to take anything off right now, but I think money management just says manage the trade so that you're in command of it. So that means just a little bit off. So that's that. That was the first question. I'm going to the next question, and that is how did you say, me? Uh, uh, yeah. Basil, uh, Zip asks, your view on Qualcomm earnings tonight? Okay, so I've loved Qualcomm uh, for a while now. I haven't actually got it as a trade. In fact, what we've done is instead, because as part of the QQQs, we are along the QQQ. Um, <clears throat> so we, 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 that way it covered a bunch of other things that I was wanting to be long. I like it. Is that a peak C? It's, this is the third day of consolidation. The MACD is strong. The stochastics at 87%, very good. The relative strength is good, not great. It's good at about 58%, maybe 61%. The nine period is way over the 14. The price is way over the 200 period, moving average of 146. I like it very much. Now, all I can say is if the earnings come out and they're disappointing, there's nothing you can do about that because that is part uh, that is part of uh, market analysis. The technicals so far are really good. The weekly chart has a down channel. <clears throat> it's one of my favorite patterns where you get a whole series of low. How does the price know to hold perfectly for weeks on end? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about nine times out of 14 has it held this tremendous um, – Support line. I'm going to make it pink. And then the next one is the Chapman Wave Inside Track Propellant Zone. We'll put it over there. It held that. It used it as a propellant zone. And then it powered through this little channel resistance and the 9 and the 14 and the 200 period moving averages. Wait a minute. 200? Do I not have a 200 here on the weekly? Anyway, whatever this is, it, it powered. And now for the first week, and the week is still young, even though it's Wednesday, uh, there's an L, which means that the 9 is crossed over in the weekly chart above the 14, and it's in a leg B. I don't know how the market will respond to Qualcomm's earnings, telecommunications hardware. Um, I guess they also have software. But it's broken above a parallel channel resistance level it made a peak C1, C2. I don't want to go into that right now. Maybe tomorrow, uh, maybe Friday, I'll talk about peak C1, C2, double two. I'll do it now. Sometimes just as a fractional miss, instead of going to um, the previous high, just underneath it, it turns around and, and fails. And then I do a, measured, a measurement and I say, if this, if these two, if you, if you compare these two vertical lines, 
you'll see that the technicals were fabulous here, but on the retest back in January of 2022, uh, February, week of February the 4th, at 192.10, just underneath the uh, all-time high of 193.58, within a point and a half, um, unbelievable, it started to fail. That says they can count that as a peak C1, C2, and if you're wrong, it's okay because you got yourself a warning to say, I might be waiting for a D. That D might not come, but I'm so close because you can see there was a little hiccup in the uh, MACD 9 period differential. There was a beautiful pop in the um, on-balance volume, but the stochastic, which to me is the most important thing here, was fading under 80%. And I think you could count that legitimately the chair point methodology as a big seat. And then it pulled back. But now we've broken this trend. So, I'm just going to back because I want to see the 120 chart. And we'll be right back. How's the chapter type? How's it? If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I'm going to take a moment on this because uh, the questioner says, um, Basil, your view on QCOM earnings tonight, I have a substantial position. So, everything I would say to you, I. it looks to me, that this is a survivor, the QCOM, Qualcomm Inc. Uh, telecommunications hardware, I, at trading 162.46 up 2.48, up at 1.67%. I would suggest to you holding it because I think that I, I would do a little bit like I did with Peaky earlier on. I said, is that a fabulous move? Just money management says to be taken at 152.44. With the risk of earnings tonight saying that it could uh, drop to 146, the 200 period exponential moving average, and then try to find some support to, 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 to start moving higher, that's one thing. If it spikes higher 
and it actually takes out in a gap above 156.66 to go to leg D, I, I'd probably be talking about the same thing. So let me just do it this way. Number one is I would love, I, I, Zip, you never even mentioned options. What I would do right now is I would buy an option or some options, call options, um, and take a little bit off. And then the one says, that's okay, because if it drops, you've already taken uh, uh, money off, and you'll lose money on the options, but you know what your risk is there. And if it spirals higher, yes, you've taken a little bit off, but you will definitely gain quite a bit with the options. I don't want to make it complicated. You Obviously, you've had this for a long time. If there is a sharp pullback, it's had just the last week alone has had a move from 140 uh, to the 156 area. That's 16 points. That's um, that's like a 10% gain. I would be prepared to get give up a 10% gain if the uh, monthly chart continues to improve and the weekly chart improves because that's just saying that, hey, uh, I, I don't want to mess my position up. It's a, this is a, I don't want to be responsible for what you've done, all the hard work for when I'm just going to make a bloop statement like that. My normal statement would be, and I'm going to stick with that, is money management says with earnings coming up, I wouldn't want to change positions because by Friday, it could be even just a little bit higher. And yeah, you are taking a whole bunch off. How do you get that back in when it's moving higher? You're going to have to pay for a higher price. If it's lower, you can do that. But I have to say, what's the worst case? The worst case is that you don't do anything right now and it drops 15 points towards the uh, the 146 or more. Uh, uh, well, it'll be less. Than, it'll be six points. Six points to the 146 level. But the way it's acted, something is going right in that company to have done so well since the low around about the 26 or so of of June. I don't want to really mess with that. I'm just going to do what I would do normally. I would say to you, hey, if you're asking me the question, there's a chance that you are a little bit a little bit nervous about the potential for something adverse going on. Therefore, why not take a little bit off here at 152.21, reassess by Friday, we'll look at it again. If it's pulled back sharply and it's under 146, that's not so great. If it's holding above 146 and pulled back but holding above, we can consider maybe putting that back. But I don't want to mess with your position. You've been here through all the, I, I don't know when you say a substantial position. I don't know if it's just recently. Uh, let me just scroll down here to see if you've added anything to it. Uh, mm, leg D day. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, that's what I would suggest. Take something off. And when it rallies sharply, that's fantastic. At a later date, you can actually put that back again. I would rather have you have a little bit extra cash right now in case it does pull back and in case it holds really well going to the beginning of August and you say, hey, I think this is going to try to climb to the 168, 172 level where there's a lot of resistance. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Uh, I, I don't want to mess with you. you. You got into that position beautifully. I don't want to mess with that position. I do want to be uh, money talk about money management, and that just says if you ask the question, take a little bit off to make yourself comfortable. Uh, question: Could I post CF? Yeah, CF is CF Industries Holdings Hydrogen Nitrogen Products. I looked at it yesterday. I liked it. I still like it at ninety one sixty five. In fact, I had it for subscribers. We didn't do anything. I just had it down as a stock that I, I like. It's there. One of the one of the ones that we're looking. Uh, maybe to get in. I don't mind actually paying up for this because it's had a big move from 113 down to the 79, 80 area, and it's way above the, all the different moving averages. I like it. Uh, but I like it more as a trade. I don't think I would get a big position in this just yet. There's a lot of work to be done in the weekly chart for it to, to say to me, hey, I've turned the corner. It's now making a cup formation at this point. Uh, it's just starting the inter to intimate to me from the doji candle high on the April, the week of the 15th of 2022 at 113.99. I do like it, yes. Next question is, uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's improving. Uh, Duffy says, uraniums, let's look at the uraniums. It's always on my list. Uh, CCJ, 
Oh, I used to have these notated everything. Oh, man. So it's a while back since I was looking at the uraniums. So they were all, every one of them I had fully notated daily, weekly, monthly, uh, even 120 minute charts. Okay, that's all I can say. C, D. It made a peak F in the monthly charts, pulling back substantially from the 33, 34 highs. Um, oh, look at this. This is very nice. That is a lower low, so I'm going to call that. Let me just double check. There are so many stocks that have made fractional lows uh, after an arch formation and then held that support just beautifully. This is one of them. I love that little pattern. Look at that. Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. I think that's lower. 2034, uh, 2035, one penny higher. Great. ABC, this is in leg D. So this is CCJ. CCJ is the uh, chemical core. I believe that's uranium, right? A, B, C. Leg D with the technicals improving. Uh, I don't like Ds to fail under the previous high. That was a peak. We've had uranium. I, I don't know if we've had a, a, a CCJ. We've had some U, 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 four Us. We've had. We've had a couple of them per periodically. Look at that pullback. What a pullback from 28 down to 20. Uh, yep, that's a, I mean, that's a pretty sharp. And now it's back to 25. So it is the cup formation. The dreaded H became an arch formation. Uh, arch formation. Retest to become beautiful U-shaped pattern. U, uranium, is looking very good. You are looking good. So I don't want to do them all other than to say CCJ is acting very well. Yes, it could be a head and shoulders pattern here, but so far A, B, C, D, even in the weekly chart, this just love, loves A, B, C, Ds, and it's gone to an F in the uh, in the monthly chart. It's looking very good. Up to, uh, you, uh, CCJ is up 1.99 at 25.11. Good, good eye, good action. Let's go to the uh, time to buy. Oh, time to buy CCJ. Oh, I thought you were in it, Duff. Okay. You know what I'm going to suggest? The on-balance volume is not overbought yet. I think it can go a little bit higher. I, I'm not happy that it's already in leg D, way under the previous E. Here's what I'm going to say to you. It's at 25.14. Um, why don't you do this? Just start a little... This is almost the high of the day. I normally wouldn't do this, but... I felt... And then put in another buy at 23.90. And if you don't get that, we'll handle what we'll do over the next few days. We'll handle the trade. But I would start a little position here at 25.14. 25.14. I'll give you the plan when we get back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, Pound dollar, Aussie dollar. Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yeah, so uh, to, to buy a stock that's already up 8.5%, in leg D, that's always very risky. But the way it's acting is really good. The way it's pushing away from the 200 period moving average. Look how look how that 200 period moving average was resistance, resistance, resistance. Now it's a propellant because we're moving away from it. So that's the reason why I'm saying I would just start just a little position at 2513. Maybe I would go buy the, the low today is 2384 just on the day. That's a big move. That's without the gap, the doji candle gap. And it is in leg D. So maybe the best would be, say, uh, you, you split your even your initial entry point into just a tad at 20, 25, 12. And then over the next two days, 24.30 to 24 would be, that would be ideal if it was going to tackle the next gap, which is above 25 on the 10th of June. And today's high is already 25.29. So it hasn't filled it because the, the low is uh, 26.12. So getting to the 26s in leg D, that, my only question, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, look, you, if you missed it because it's just so good in leg D, um, that's fine. To be in it, just take a little tad at 25.11. And let's have, see you have on this small position, have a 10% stop. Uh, just initially, and then have a trading stop. And if the same position, just a small little position, gets to the 20, 25, 80 level, I would raise my stop and just treat it as a trade. And the best would be, if you have patience, to wait for a peak D and have a pullback to the 24, 30, 23, 80 area. That's, that, to me, is the best entry point. But it might not give you that chance. This is a really, there's a reason for this breakout. And I would not deny the fact that, let me see, you, 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 doing the same thing. At 596, leg A, leg B, uh, peak A, peak B, leg, hasn't even started a leg C yet. You, 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 at 6.04, high, uh, five, six days ago, today's high 603. <laughs> Probably I'd say to you, I'd rather go to this one. It's a different kettle of fish. It doesn't have the same price pattern, but it's moving. It's up 5.5% of 31 cents at 5.93. To me, that's just one we've had before for subscribers to my opening call, so we have some familiarity with it. But I'm just saying that's another way to play. All right, uh, Basil, in the eyes of the Chapman Wave, the Fed owns 100% of the market direction, and there's no predictions of direction until after 2.30 p.m. today. No, no, no. I'm not saying that today. What I'm saying is, we are long the Dow. We got in a long way. We've been long a number of times in the shorter term uh, via the, the diamonds. And that's the position we've got. And that just says we are bullish right now until we change that. So, no, the Fed is the, is the, is the trigger for a market sharp pullback or, or a market continuation to the upside. It's an interruption at 2.32 to 2.30 today. But I, I don't, at this particular point, I don't think it's changing the trend. 
I think the trend is slightly higher highs and higher lows until there's a really big breakout uh, in the, let me just go to the Indu, uh, until there's a big breakout into the 32,600s. That's like 800 points, maybe 1,000 points higher. And then I'm going to say, oh, now there's a slow build up. We're going to get all the different indices improving, but we aren't there. So I can only go one step at a time. And my step right now says, we're long, we'll stay long, we've got stops in, we know exactly what we want to do. Well, our positions are looking really good at this particular point. The day is young, anything can happen. And I'm saying the daily chart is still bullish. The weekly chart needs a lot of work. And you know me, I go step by step. When the daily gets to maybe a D and the um, weekly is now maybe starting a leg C or has a very strong leg B, I'll say, hey, you know what? I'm now focusing not on the daily anymore. I'm going, that's how we did the dollar. You remember we did the dollar from the daily at that exact low that was made. And then I said, I think we're going long. And um, and then with the, that improved. Then I said, the weekly now is in a buy mode. And then the monthly went from a buy signal to a buy mode. That's how I do it. I could easily say to you, the Dow projects to 33,184, the change period moving average. That means nothing. It's like what I was talking about when I was talking about the timing when Kramer had uh, Tom DeMarc and Larry Williams on so quickly, one after the other, um, over a series of two or three months, I said, timing is not good. The owls don't like that. And look what happened. You had a massive sell-off for the following three days when they were talking about buying. They were right in the end. I didn't say that. I said, timing is the issue. The fact that Kramer decided that it was so important that he had to bring it up again when he's not a technician, although he does some pretty good technical work once in a while. Um, I, that was the issue. My only issue was elves don't like it. Watch what they do. And what they did is they smacked it down so that people couldn't believe these guys. Then they turned out to be right. Timing is the issue. Uh, yes, thank you. So call, uh, someone asked about call options on Apple. You know, Apple, I like Apple. We were going to go long Apple. We missed it. And I above 147, yeah, it is a 154. I do like Apple. If we can, if Apple holds 150 support into Friday, I think that's going to be a really good sign for the monthly chart, um, and that's a big deal. So call option, yes, if that's what you're talking about, uh, TG. Next question I had was, um, where was it? Where was it? Oh, okay, going back here, PayPal. P-Y-P-L, PayPal. Uh, peak A, peak B. Uh, I, I hate this. This is just so frustrating to me. I have all of these notated from the beginning of time. PayPal, oh, I'm not going to do that now. It had, you know, I told you I should do a, a study for um, commodity and stocks magazines or stock and commodity magazine. February of 2021, it goes to 309.14. It pulls back and then it pulls all the way back to the 240 level. And then it goes on, in July of 2021, it goes to 310.16. 309.14, 310, a dollar difference in all those my five months, six, five months, six months, and it double tops at exuding pennies. Unbelievable. And then it smashes to the downside and goes to the 60, 67-ish area. And here it is. Leg A goes to a peak A. Leg B goes to a peak B. And now we're waiting for, yes, PayPal finally is actually doing what it should have been done during a long time. I believe it's a very, very good company. I'm just going from word of mouth from what I hear from a number of people. We once owned it. Oh, that means I've lost the notation of when we owned it. Oh, I can find it. Yeah, look at this. Finally, a beautiful, not a cup, but a bowl formation when you get a slow move uh, uh, down and then up again as you have in the weekly chart. Um, that's a good sign. So, yes, paper, what is the question? A time to prepare a buy in paper, recognizing that yesterday was a better time. Um, it's at 84.07. This is what I'm going to suggest. This is a little different because now the technicals have, for the first time, really improved uh, since the big top was made in June, around about the 8th, and it pulled back very sharply from 88-ish uh, down to the 68-ish area. That's a big move. Yes, I'm going to suggest... You know the risks. Now, you do options. And what I would say to you is in the option area, it's at 84.08. I would get an in the money, 82.50. If there's, if there's an 82.50 strike, I'd get an in the money call 
while I'm thinking about the rest of the thing. And what would the call be? Would it be in August, August the 19th? Yes, I'd get it for August the 19th. And then it gives you time to think after today, what happens? Uh, I like the action on a short trip. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I'm going to land to see now. This is Rick Dan with a couple of questions. I have one minute to jump in. I'm really as well as it is the Dow at this particular point. Okay, let me just go back here. Let me show you something else. Uh, PayPal is acting really well. I like it, and and because I discussed it in terms of uh, maybe taking uh, buying a call and a, a strike price low at eighty two fifty. But look, um, PayPal in my Chapman Wave automated uh, support and resistance levels. PayPal is breaking eighty three seventy one, which is the resistance. It's gone to eighty four. 43 already today. After this, you got 88 and 90, and then 91, 94, and then 97. So I like it. And the 7161 has been key support that it broke under. Now it's above in the weekly chart, and I got nothing in the monthly. So that's good. And when we're looking at PayPal, PayPal, uh, when we're looking at Broadcom, no, Qualcomm, Qualcomm is just right now, um, look. There's nothing in resistance. It's broken 148. It's broken 152. It's actually, actually 152, then 157. So it's holding really well. So as long as it can keep doing that, and look, this is the 
Um, this is called the um, the green line here is uh, man, it's the outer perimeters. The herb did it for me. Anyway, it's green. It's really good. So, yeah, this is holding very well. So let me just do this before we wrap up. And I'm going to be doing – I am going to be doing Larry's Hour coming up because a lot of people had asked me if I would go through different currencies and the commodities. I didn't finish them up yesterday. Plus bonds. There's a lot to talk about. This is before the Fed talk, so I'll be doing that as well. A white light to, to Larry. I mean, everyone. I'm getting tons and tons of, of, of people in the uh, Tiger YouTube. Yeah. And what you might is just say white light to Larry Pesavento. We all want him back. Um, best to Larry. So I'm going to wrap it up right now. Dow's up 122. I'll be doing the next hour. I'll do the news. There. Oh, there it is. PayPal just broke out. It's at 84.96. Got it. Must defer, Tiger, and it's up. <laughs>